Good evening, and welcome to another one of my episodes of A Verse A Day Keeps Islam Away. Today, I will be talking to you about science and how it somehow relates in the Quran. Everything that we know of today has been brought down to you by Allah in this miraculous book that we call Al Quran. The first thing I'd like to go to is Quran uh, 35, uh, verse. 13. He causes the night to enter in upon the day. And he causes the day to enter in upon the night. And he has made subservient to you the sun and the moon. Each one follows its course to an appointed time. So here we are talking about the sun and the moon how they each have their individual courses. Uh, I want to move on to the next verse before I can really analyze this verse again, which is um, Surah 36, verse number 40. Neither it is allowable to the sun that it should overtake the moon, nor can the night outstrip the day, and all float in a sphere. Now, when it's talking about that neither is allowable that the sun should overtake the moon or the moon overtake the sun, I have a question to my f fellow Muslim friends. How the hell do you explain lunar eclipses or solar eclipses? Kasuf al-Shams wa Kasuf al-Qamar. If obviously we have the sun that has its predetermined course and the moon that has its predetermined course and neither of which can overtake the course of the other, how is it that we can have both overlap? That must be a flaw in Allah's design. I, I, I mean, obviously, we live in a geocentric world where the earth is stationary and the sun and the moon revolve around us, but hey, should they not have their own individual paths? How the hell are they crossing paths? All right, I'd like to move on to a little bit of the hadith right now. Uh, I'd like to start with Hadith al-Bukhari. Verse 4, book 54, narration number 482. Allah's Apostle said, The hellfire complained to its Lord, saying, O oh Lord, my different parts are eating each other up. So, he allowed it to take two breaths, one in the winter and one in the summer. This is the reason for the severe heat and the bitter cold you find in weather. So now we're explaining the seasons. Why is it hot in the summer? Why does it get cold in the winter? That's because the fiery pits of hell need to breathe. So I take it when it inhales, it gets really cold. And when it exhales, it gets really hot. One thing I want to know is, if the fiery pits of hell, if the flaming, burning fire and burnt brimstone are asking the Lord to breathe, why is Allah conceding to them? Next one I'd like to go to is, again, Sahih al-Bukhari, volume number 4, book number 55, narration number 546. So, Allah's Apostle said, The angel Gabriel has just now told me of the answer. If a man has sexual intercourse with his wife and gets discharged first, then the child will resemble him. However, if the woman gets discharged first, the child will resemble her. This is how you resemble your parents. If your father came first, then you look like your dad. If your mother came first, then you look like your mom. Now obviously knowing about the entire misogynistic culture of Islam, I bet you every single Muslim resembles their daddies. And now, I'd like to go back to the Quran and let's review Surah Al-Mu'minun, the believers. Al-Quran, uh, <clears throat> Surah number 23, verse number 14. 
Then we made the seed into a clot. Then we made the clot a lump of flesh. Then we made in the lump of flesh bones. Then we clothed the bones with flesh. Then caused it to grow into another creation. So blessed be Allah, the best of the creators. Ah. So now we're talking about embryology, the way a fetus is born. First, we're talking about a clot, and by the clot, they're talking about the sperm. Once it mixes with an egg, you know, you have the zygote. Um, so we have the clot, and what's happening with the clot is first, it's being dressed in flesh, and then it's being dressed with bones. The bones being the skeletal, skeletal body of the fetus. Then, does Allah, with His miraculous and wonderful design, does He coat the bones with flesh? And then, the fetus starts growing into a new creation. The biggest problem with that is, has anyone heard of a woman giving a miscarriage to a skeleton? To something that looks like this? No, this does not exist in humanity. Never has and never will. <clears throat> Just in case if you want to know, embryonic cell has something called total potentiality. Total potentiality cells can actually differentiate into all sorts of different types of cells. So, when you have a cell with total potentiality, once it keeps replicating and dividing, it can become skin cells, bone cells, brain cells, uh, liver cells, internal body cells, external body cells, eye cells, brain cells, whatever the hell kind of cells you want, all simultaneously. This is called differentiating into different, dif into different body systems. You don't first create internal organs and then you dress them in bones and then you finally follow up with dress dressing them with flesh. That's just stupid. The last verse I want to go to is Al-Quran, uh, Surah number 2. Verse number 259. I'm just gonna, it's a very long verse. I'm just gonna skip to the very end of it because it's something completely irrelevant, just like everything else in the Quran. It does not follow, but going on, <clears throat> 259, very end of it. And look at the bones, how we set them together. Then clothe them with flesh. So when it became clear to him, he said, Ah, I know that Allah has power over all things. I don't know where to start or it's possibly just better for me to just end this now because none of this is science. And for each one of you that has told me that every single modern day invention is written here in the Quran, show me where, where. Hell, the first idea of a heliocentric universe was even proposed thousands of years before Islam and and thousands of years before Copernicus. Why are we going back to, to a geocentric world? Oh, actually, I just remembered one thing. I'm sure many of you have heard how Muslims say, oh, you cannot translate the Quran from Arabic because the Quranic Arabic is just so sophisticated, so divine, it's so wonderful that you just cannot translate it. Well, first, today I say bullshit. Uh, Arabic is just another language, just like any other language in the freaking world. I want to go back to Surah 36, verse number 40. And all float on in a sphere. Right now, I do want to get a little bit of the Arabic pride here and say, you're not really understanding the full meaning if you're not reading the Arabic. In the Arabic, it says, وَكُلٌّ فِي فَلَكٍ يَسْبَحُونَ So honestly, it really doesn't say that each of them floats in a sphere. It's actually saying they all swim in a sphere. So now we have the sun and the moon not just floating, they're actually swimming. Yeah, that's science. Alright, well that's all I have for today. Thank you for joining and I look forward to seeing you next time.